Welcome to Going Digital with Zoom Catalog. Our goal with Going Digital is to highlight industry leaders and their digital transformations in the promotional product industry. We hope you find this information valuable and that it helps you grow your business. With that said, today I'd like to introduce our guest, RJ Hagel. He's the Global Marketing Manager at Gold Star. Hi, RJ. Hey, Brenna. How are you doing? Yeah, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So just to jump right in, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your role and Gold Star? Sure. Um, so um, as you mentioned, I'm the Global Marketing Manager. I started with uh, Gold Star almost eight years ago. I was their first marketing manager um, previously. Um, most of the marketing was done within the sales department. We were a pretty small organization. And um, along the eight years, we've uh, had some tremendous successes and, and continue to grow. Um, we had, uh, even when I started, we had a small operation in Europe as well that has continued to grow over the eight years. Uh, about two years ago, um, we our goal was to merge the two businesses together and start to leverage some of the strengths that we had between the two organizations. Um, not just that we were selling the same products previously, but actually through some management. And mm -hmm. so there was a restructure of the business, and including the marketing team. Um, and the goal being that we wanted to bridge our product development, our brand, um, some of the operations to share best practices and sharing in some resources like graphics and IT and some other areas that were really critical to um, both of our businesses independently. And so um, I became the, the first uh, global marketing manager as well, um, continued to build a team underneath me. And, and today, um, you know, working with uh, two strong groups in uh, both North America and Europe and looking to uh, make some big changes here uh, soon as a lot of companies coming through the pandemic and looking at the opportunity for the future. So i um, very excited and, and uh, lots of good things to come. Yeah, so I think I know the answer to this, but would you say Gold Star is um, going through a digital transformation right now? Absolutely. I mean, I think, I think at this point, every company should be thinking that way. And if it's not, then should be considering what they're doing um, to support a digital world uh, moving forward. And there's so many places that touches on, um, you know, just from starting with internal communications, having a remote team. I already had a remote team continuing to expand um, and we're hiring new people um, who aren't gonna be working in a traditional office. So just some of the technologies to communicate internally, um, but then, of course, you know, on the customer side of things, on the distributor side, things like trade shows, I don't believe will ever truly go back to the way they were. Um, there will be some hybrid approach between in-person and digital shows. Um, certainly things like, you know, we're talking about here, like catalogs and other types of collateral and other things that uh, traditionally were viewed in a, um, a tangible format is continuing to evolve, not just with the need for digital, but also um, ecology and just the idea of uh, building a more sustainable model for um, our businesses within a with an environmental environmental impact standpoint about printing paper and shipping and logistics, um, all of the things that go into moving goods around the country, um, including things like heavy catalogs, will continue to be important, um, but in a much smaller way. Yeah, makes sense. And you touched on this a little bit, but um, part of that digital transformation, um, you guys, you mentioned you're a global supplier, which we know. How is that helping you guys think differently about staffing and training and that being part of your evolution? Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, as I mentioned, we were already a technically a virtual organization prior with uh, offices in Ireland and also in San Diego, where close to where I'm located. But we've continued to expand our mindset about um, location. And, um, you know, like you said, working virtually, allowing people to be more flexible um, in Europe, people don't typically, uh, they're not typically born in the same areas that they may be working in. So um, my team in Europe is pretty diverse. They come from all different areas of Europe and um, we've been able to have some flexibility with people working from home or going back to visit family for an extended period of time. And so there's some flexibility in that part. Yeah, it's pretty amazing how technology enables us to work with each other across the globe. We do the same thing at Zoom Catalog here. We're not constrained to the US or a specific state. We're able to spread out and get talent all over the world. Mm -hmm. So talking about your digital transformation, um, we've touched on this in the past, but we're an industry built around physical products. So how can we use digital to expand on that experience? Yeah, so uh, promotional products are obviously something that you can't replicate. 
um, digitally. I mean, you might be able to show a virtual proof or have, you know, some sort of 3D model that shows a product, but it is something that we touch and feel and is a tangible thing that we, we, um, we work with, you know, every single day. Um, I think one of the things for me that is very, very valuable with technology and just kind of making a shift is that we can help lower costs of things by using more virtual technologies to be able to produce samples. Again, maybe looking at three-dimensional models where somebody doesn't have to touch and feel the product. So that you know, doesn't require a supplier to have the time and the, and the money to package something up and ship it out. And there's no cost involved with that. The, um, the, the product gets to you much quicker um, and can be shared much easier with a client. So they don't, you know, have to go and drive over to their location and drop it off. And all of the challenges that come along with, with moving products, especially custom products in our industry, where there's multiple colors and features and different things, um, you know, for even just writing instruments, you have ink color and you have drink, color and some different things that, um, you know, that, that create so many different variations. It's hard to get your hands around anyway. That's, but, um, but yeah, I, I think the idea is that to make things simpler and make the speed of doing business faster by using digital technologies. Um, but at the end of the day, the people still love to touch and feel product yeah. and um, is not easily forgotten. Unfortunately, that is something that's that I'm, I'm impacted by all the time is digitally you receive an email or something with a great link to something and you mean to get back to it and you forget about it. Mm -hmm. But you don't necessarily forget about the pen that's sitting on your desk with the brand on it. So yeah, um, there's still tremendous marketing value um, and I think will be no matter how much technology gets involved. Yeah, it's so true. And uh, I think as an industry, we've barely scratched the surface on how to use digital to um, show and present products that are actually physical products. But, Absolutely. Um, we are an industry of physical products. So there's definitely a bit of a barrier there and it's going to be interesting to see how things evolve and the tools and solutions suppliers come up with. So shifting gears a little bit, um, we are Zoom catalog. So I have to ask, how is your catalog strategy evolving? Yeah, so that's, that's absolutely something that we've been um, talking about over the course of the last two plus years, certainly during the pandemic has accelerated a lot of this, um, is really how people are using catalogs and what's the purpose of them. Um, you know, traditionally, um, you know, in the past websites required you to uh, view things in a very um, linear fashion. So you had silos of products based on your navigation and it really took you to be able to click through to certain items and kind of know what you're looking for. So catalogs always been great because they help to tell a story. You know, you, you flip page by page and you go through and the, the supplier in our case or the company development catalog has the opportunity to be able to tell a story about their brand and about their products and what they offer. And I think that experience isn't going to go away. Mm -hmm. um, it's a matter of how it's delivered and what value does it play in, into the, the, um, into the, the role of, of the marketer in today's world. Um, but just right off the bat, there's a few things that have changed. You know, if you're not printing something um, and you're looking at things on screen, um, maybe an eight or nine point font doesn't work any longer. Yep. Um, you have the ability to create digital links. Do you really have to put all the product information into a catalog if you can make it very easy for somebody to click through and be able to get to a website for more information? If you can embed video into a catalog to repl replicate what would have been a static image mm -hmm. uh, or maybe not even a video, but like a GIF or some other kind of animated graphic, um, you know, you still get the best of the storytelling but be able to include other information that can really help sell the product, show some of the features. Um, you know, another thing that we, we've struggled with, with static print is sometimes how do you show features of a product? You can point them out, you can put bullets, but everybody knows that readership and things hasn't been what it used to be. People aren't reading, they wanna be able to see and see moving graphics and hear what they need to be told. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's something that we continue to talk about and evolve and, um, you know, one of the challenges that, that we have with that is really about staffing and having, making sure that we have the right people to develop the right kind of assets. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what we're going through right now is evaluating what is it that we want to achieve? What are some of our goals and how do we get to there? Yeah. Um, and it can start with simple things like uh, one of the, the books that we're working on right now, we are embedding links to download some digital assets for people. So we're showing some information about the product and then you can download social media graphics some flyers, some case studies, mm -hmm 
um, and a virtual design board that can be shared with, with uh, distributors, clients to be able to show products in a little bit of different way besides just a product with a logo on it, a little more of a lifestyle. That's awesome. Yeah. The interactive side of digital catalogs is huge and um, our industry is slowly moving there. We've seen suppliers do amazing things this year. You guys have obviously evolved and your catalogs look amazing, but thinking of it as this piece that's not going to be printed does open up the doors so much. So it's exciting and it's going to be cool to see what you guys come up with and things you listed are like definitely ahead of the curve. We haven't seen some of that before. So absolutely. Very cool. So um, what are your plans for print? And did you print this year? <laughs> um, so we did actually print a brochure at the beginning of the year. Um, one of the strategies was to be able to mail um, our customers or at least a, a portion of our customer base um, because we were obviously like most people struggling to get true face-to-face -face time and get tangible product in people's hands. Um, so we did, we did do a catalog mailing at the beginning of the year. Um, it was not a full line catalog like we've traditionally done. Um, it was basically bestsellers and just some of our core products that we knew were relevant in, in the market. We added in some PPE stuff that we had brought in, some um, antimicrobial pens and some other things that we, again, we knew that were um, <clears throat> relevant during that period of time. At least in, in the US, uh, we had started to see the pandemic kind of peak sometime around November, December, maybe even into January. So we knew we were already on the, on the outset of that. Um, we haven't printed anything since then. Um, we did publish uh, two different, uh, a couple different virtual catalogs um, this year um, as far as um, making sure that we had um, some collateral to support some of the new products that we we're bringing in and just, again, reinforcing some of that. The traditional feel we felt like a lot of distributors are still looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as going forward, uh, we will be printing again, probably much smaller quantities. Um, the books will be a lot more focused on um, specific items. We'll probably be incorporating more QR codes so people will be able to use their phones or, um, you know, web addresses are always kind of tough because no matter what you do, they're always kind of long. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're to the point, not only with Zoom catalog being very mobile friendly, but our website's also mobile friendly and we can provide things in a, in a way that can at least draw some interest on your phone, maybe be able to tag it or save it as a favorites and then be able to go back to your desktop and view it at a different time. Yeah. So it's how do we create that experience through print that cannot be replicated by digital? You know, you can't, it's very hard to be at a trade show and walk away with something digital. There's a way you have to give somebody a reminder to look at you when it's a more appropriate time. Yeah. So that could be something even as simple as a postcard that leads you to a virtual catalog or something tangible with a few products. And, you know, so it's about how do we take the offline and push people online? Yeah, so we're merging the digital experience with print. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, and um, you did touch on it. You said you know, the catalog you did print was much smaller and more focused. And I think that kind of leads into the idea of breakout catalogs and customizable catalogs, which you obviously leverage. So why do you think these are important? Yeah, so the breakout catalogs for, for Gold Star are, are significant and to me in a couple of ways. One is um, we've been in business for quite a long time. I think we're approaching 50 years now and you know, traditionally been known for writing instruments. And, um, and we felt like we have done a great job in that space. And, and um, in the last few years, we've branched out to some of the other top categories, including bags and drinkware. So some of it had to do with establishing who we are and kind of laying our groundwork. It's different if you, put, if you have a catalog and you put drinkware and bags into the back of a catalog just to show people that you have them. But to me, it's different in a positioning standpoint to be able to say, hey, we're a bag supplier now. You know, you know us for great writing instruments, but remember us for bags and drinkware. So it makes a statement um, that from a brand perspective to get people to remember us. So that's a little bit of a, a selfish way to look at it, but it's, but it's something that we do from a brand perspective that's important. Um, on the flip side of it is that, um, you know, through the last 10 plus years or so, as the industry has evolved, I'm sure that many distributors would agree that they're finding that dropping off a catalog to somebody that has you know, 50 different product categories in it is not the way to sell anymore. That you really wanna be able to listen to what customers need and be able to focus on, um, on the products that they're most interested in. So 
let's just say I'm working with a distributor and they're, they're meet with a company that says, hey, I need some you know, stainless steel tumblers or something like that. And we want them to use our catalog. Giving somebody a gold star catalog that leads with writing instruments when they're looking for drinkware doesn't always send a great message. So you know, we really wanted to help give the distributor the right tools to help present us in a way. Yeah. And then certainly layering on top of the Zoom Custom is now give them a way for them to put their own branding on it and be able to share it a little bit more specifically again to the, the categories that their customers are mostly interested in. Yeah. Instead of, of being kind of a, you know, in, 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 in spray and pray approach, I guess would be the way you would move away from that. So this is a little more focused. Yeah, exactly. Making the catalog less of a reference guide and more of an inspiration piece. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we kind of were talking about how um, catalogs have a beginning and an end. So you can really choose that um, journey that the customer is going to take and a full catalog with tons of different product categories may not be that effective. That yeah, well, I think it's different too when you have a printed catalog where you're flipping through it and you're able to kind of like look at index and quickly flip to the page that you need. Although digital catalogs have indexes, um, I don't think the experience is the same that people typically use them the same way they used to. So mm -hmm. it has to be smaller and more bite size and more consumable in a small space. Yep. Um, you know, 150 pages in a catalog probably is going to be too much for most people. Yep. And so instead of scaring them away with how much you have is be able to break it down and give, give them a little bit more focused approach to, to your products. Yeah, makes total sense. So is your full line catalog dead or are you going to do that as well? Um, that's a good question. So we we have one that's pretty much published where it's it's a full line as far as we we're going to be presenting. We do we will always have some products on our website that may not make its way to um, to a catalog. Maybe it's something that you know we're starting to see to a place that it may start to phase out, mm -hmm. or maybe we have a good base of it. And this is really not something we want to promote. We do want to keep focus on the things that we know people are looking for, and the things that really we feel support our company and our brand well. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we have one for this year. We continue to build on that first book that I mentioned to you earlier, mm -hmm. and we've built it out to be almost full line and we'll continue to use that throughout the year. Um, and we'll, we'll keep evaluating too, you know, this is, uh, as we record this is in June. So we have a little bit of time before we make decisions about what's coming for 2022. But um, I think anything's uh, up in there at this point, but we are committed to doing some sort of catalog, whether it be Again, more of kind of breakout brochures or you know specific around certain themes, things like that. Yeah, and that plays into one of the goals we all know Gold Star has, which is to keep it simple. Um, we know your tagline, we've seen it. So, how, what do you guys do to achieve the goal of keeping things simple? Sure. Yeah. So we um, we started with what we call simplicity. It's actually something we were able to trademark for ourselves, so we're very proud of that. Um, and it started with with pricing, it really came down to my experience before this industry was um, really in the awards industry. I've been in the decorating, just general, between printing and decorating and anything that has to do with printing or customizing I've been in since before I was, before I graduated college, so early in college. And um, I've moved throughout a couple of different industries that all really tie back to what we do in the promotional products industry. And I remember uh, making trophies where we were charging by the letter and so, you know, maybe if it was a big project, we would charge by the plate, but we were charging by the letter and it was so difficult for me just to take the time to calculate it and then explain to somebody what we were doing. And if say they wanted to write a small poem onto something, <laughs> it, it became very difficult to justify the cost. And so, um, you know, I was, had always been a big advocate of making things simple. People want to do business with companies that make it easy. I mean, look at what's happened with Amazon and, mm -hmm. and what they've been able to achieve. And, and even to this day, 20 years later, there hasn't been another company that's completely rivaled them as far as how easy they make it to do business. So we're too easy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I certainly am a, a paying customer myself. Um, so taking it from there, you know, we really want to make it easy for people to communicate with us. So we have dedicated sales teams, inside and outside sales teams, as well as service for each territory. So people know who to call. They have accessible uh, access to somebody that they, they're familiar with. Um, we do our best to try to provide collateral for things that we're promoting. Uh, we have a, a gallery that we manage with for social media where we can um, provide people um, graphics that they can use to download themselves and, and be able to share through their social channels. Um, you know, we have free samples. 
Um, and then of course, as I mentioned before about pricing, it's simple pricing. It, it really comes down to, you know, set up charges, any decoration charges are all included in the price. Yep. Um, you know, shipping is included. We started on writing instruments and we've been offering it recently on bags and drinkware, trying to see if that can be something that, that our distributors find value in um, and really figuring out how we can leverage more and more of that as our really core piece of our business. Um, and just obviously going through some difficult economic times um, with raising rising prices in just about everywhere across the globe. Um, it's something that we're, we're careful about, but we want to be able to offer a real strong value to our customers and they know us for something. So um, we're going to continue to focus our business on making it easy to do business with us. And, you know, it's about partnership. And um, I personally, like I said, I've worked on the distributor side. I worked on the decorating side. I've seen all parts of this industry. And, and I know as a, as a consumer and a customer of promotional, um, that the easier it is to customize something, the more likely I am to purchase it. So that's really our goal is partnership and, and finding, um, you know, those, those people who are willing to come along this journey with us. Yeah, that's a great goal. Makes a lot of sense. So, um, you guys are clearly going digital as a global company. What's next? That's a great question. What's next? Um, I think right now for me, um, as we're continuing to plan for the upcoming year is, um, is about leveraging and growing what we've already committed to. So when we talk about things like digital as taking ideas and now starting to make them a reality. Um, so for me right now, it's working on building infrastructure. So it could be um, continuing to um, commit to using say promo standards where we need to be able to get our, our product data and images and other pieces of the, um, the informational side put in a good format, uh, not only for ourselves, but for Europe as well, mm -hmm. to be able to share through external resources like maybe Zoom catalog or um, being able to just make it easy to find our product information. So that would be one thing. Uh, continuing to um, develop some of our internal staff and look for additional staff to resource um, mm -hmm. that know um, motion graphics that can help with multimedia design, um, different things that require a skill set that maybe a catalog designer doesn't have right. traditionally. Um, and just looking at all areas of our business and making sure that we're, um, you know, looking at each customer touch point and optimizing our experience to make sure we are easy to do business with and addressing some of those things. Um, because I think otherwise we have a really strong foundation in our products and who we are as a brand. So it's just, uh, you know, continuing to improve on all those things and, um, you know, committed and staying focused on who we are and, and, you know, who, who we want to be to our distributor partners. Right. Yeah. It's going to be exciting to see where you guys end up. We'll have to do this interview this time next year. See yeah. That'd be thing. great to see. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So um, last question, what advice do you have for other promotional product companies that are going digital or thinking so, about going digital? <laughs> yeah. So I think, um, you know, a uh, couple things to keep in mind. I think one is always getting back to purpose is strategy. Mm -hmm. What are we, what are you trying to achieve? And, and what purpose is it gonna play? Um, I think it can be starting with distributors and talking with different people about what their needs are and making sure that if you're moving to more of a digital strategy that you're still addressing some of the issues that, that are needed. Um, you know, looking at um, doing an internal um, uh, audit of all of your systems and figuring out what are the most problematic areas, um, what's the lowest hanging fruit to be able to make quick impact. You know, it could just be something like working with, with you guys to be able to just incorporate a, a digital catalog strategy versus a printed catalog strategy. You're freeing up some money from the shipping and printing side that you can reinvest back in the business um, in some other areas and maybe it's making video or things like that. Um, and then looking at your resources and really changing um, the perception about who can do what and, and how quickly can it be done. Um, one of the things that I found even with, with not printing catalogs is you have a little bit of quicker window because to publish a digital catalog versus publishing, publishing a printing catalog could, could save you a month of time. So it changes even your workflow and, and uh, your planning. And so there's been some real good things, um, you know, looking at it from that perspective as well. Um, but it comes back to strategy and, and then making sure you have the means to execute the strategy and the right people in place. Um, but I don't think it should be scary. I don't think this is something that should be looked at as, um, 
a big unknown. I think it's a matter of testing things. You know, the one nice thing about digital space is you can test things a lot easier and quicker yeah. and get, and you can get real data behind it to see who's interacting with you and who's clicking through and how long are they watching and where are they going after they leave? Um, you know, being able to incorporate, um, you know, any type of analytics package. We use Google Analytics, but yeah. there's other much more advanced packages out there to figure out what people are doing. Um, your infrastructure with your CRM and figuring out how can we, you know, be able to capture all customer activity from a digital perspective. Yeah. Um, and in that, in those cases, it actually makes things a lot more freeing because now you can better anticipate what people are, are wanting and needing. Right. Yeah. It's not scary. It's exciting, at least in my opinion as well. There's just so much opportunity and with digitally, there's more room for trial and error. So yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with that. Great. Any other things you wanted to add or discuss today? No, I mean, I, I, I'm excited as you are to kind of see the future of where we go from here and, and how can we continue to, to bridge this gap to do part of what we all love is really promotional products and how can we continue to make, um, you know, get through, not only get through the pandemic, but come through in a good way to really kind of figure out this next phase of the industry and, you know, provide leadership and really just kind of be a face of, of change and hopefully for the better. So. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, RJ. We really enjoyed chatting today and I'm excited to um, follow up with you in a year. So you're invited Absolutely. back. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, thanks so much. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Yeah, Take bye -bye. care. Bye.